everybody, welcome to Madden Science. We're doing another flipped classroom lesson, this time with AP Environmental Science, Unit 8, Pathogens and Infectious Disease. This one is particularly special in that we are at the very beginning, or sort of beginning, maybe three months in, to the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. So the stats I'm giving you are coming to us really on this day. So we're on March 11th, 2020. So we'll see how these stats age as we look at this in months and perhaps years to come. All right, so within our APES curriculum 8.15, here we are, it's at the very bottom of unit eight. You can see some of our key vocab. So we're gonna to touch each and every one of these. Again, keep in mind, you can pause things, screenshot it, rewind, come back to it. Here are the different sections. So. The ability of pathogens to adapt. So we'll talk about the evolution of different pathogens, both viruses, bacteria, and parasites. So what are the specific ones? Where do they occur? What is their connection to the environment? We'll look at climate zones branching from the equator north and south. We'll touch on the connection to the developing and developed world in terms of poverty and low income areas with regard to sanitary waste disposal and how that relates. Um, talk about plague as a particular, uh, in this case, bacteria. We'll look at tuberculosis, malaria, West Nile, SARS, MERS, Zika, cholera. I've also added to the mix HIV and, of course, COVID-19. As always, our flip lesson ideas are in place. Take a note, some drawings, both general and specific questions. Keep in mind you can pause it and you're gonna to need to add one comment with some specific information. Again, really interesting time we're at. Try and find something related to what we're doing. Add it in the comments below. In terms of resources, uh, I realize I forgot to put on there, Johns Hopkins University, coronavirus, probably be your number one place to go. Information is beautiful. World Health Organization, CDC, and then I listed a few other things that I'm going to mention in here. Obviously not time to go into depth. So David Quammen, really good fresh air interview from a few weeks ago. His TED Talk, talking about zoonotic viruses. Two different episodes from Radiolab that are really great. Patient Zero and Kill Em All, dealing with mosquitoes. Patient Zero with HIV. You can find a number of videos from our APES YouTube playlist. PBS ran a great series, Jeff Sachs, uh, Carl Zimmer, two great books, um, World of Viruses and Parasite Rex. All right, what are we dealing with? We've got our apes wheel, big emphasis on the biology. What's going on with the evolution of these guys? How does this relate to anthropology and our history, the economics and ethics of certainly COVID-19? All right, so pathogens organized. Here's what we got. We got viruses, bacteria, and parasites. The ones that we're looking at, again, emphasis in this case on viruses. We got tuberculosis, cholera, and plague for bacteria. And for our one parasite, really, it's the one eukaryote that we're looking at. So it falls within the protus. You could have parasites in fungi and within animals. We're just looking at this one. Just a reminder, here's where you can get to the YouTube videos. Probably my most favorite website. So here's Johns Hopkins. So look at coronavirus up to date. You can see around the world. We'll see some animations with that coming up. Either way, this is really interesting. We'll also take a look at, from Information is Beautiful, kind of a wider lens, not just on coronavirus and COVID-19, but history of infectious disease, which is just it's pretty much my favorite website since Protein Data Bank, which I'll reference in a few slides. So super awesome. You can see up top, if I click just on viruses, it shows you just the viral diseases. Ones that we're doing again, HIV, uh, COVID-19, SARS, MERS. You can see just the bacteria. And obviously this isn't every infectious disease, but it's the main ones. And then parasites with malaria over on the side if you zoom in over here. Now, 
these tables, so if I click off that, it's got everybody. This one is based on deadliness on the y-axis or fatality rate. You could peek at awareness, right? media coverage, obviously COVID-19 pretty high, uh, number of sufferers, which we'll talk about coming up soon. And then on the x-axis, you can have contagiousness, which is important. Note, in the top right corner, there's very few that are both very contagious and very deadly. Closest thing you get would be rabies. But these other ones, it's not within their you know, evolutionary design to be both extremely deadly and contagious. This would be uncommon. All right, we're on this coming up. Here's just a reminder of some of the viral and bacterial anatomy. Let's see a typical bacterium. Some of the different types of viruses. You'll see, again, this is similar to the shape of one of these. It's actually a kid's toy, but coronavirus is not dissimilar to this. Keep in mind, corona coming from Latin for a crown, as if it's got a crown around it. Here's from our AP bio book. Classes of animal viruses, whether they've got DNA or RNA, and whether that nucleic acid is double-stranded or single-stranded. Some of the ones that are on here. We've got, mostly on the second page actually, uh, coronavirus here, similar to SARS. We talked about West Nile, influenza, which will also be mentioned, and then HIV. Important to note that it is beneficial for different viruses and like the current coronavirus to be able to mutate quickly. This is an interesting curve that shows the more advanced organism, more advanced in terms of genome size, generally the lower mutation rate. So you see that trend curving down or an inverse relationship. I mentioned earlier, good friend Carl Zimmer doing amazing work, talks about the fact that we've got our inner virome, we're Seven, eight, nine percent of our genome is of viral origins, including the ability to make placentas for placental mammals. Two awesome talks, Planet of Viruses from Carl on viruses and Bonnie Basler TED Talk on bacteria. All right, let's look at this. So 20th century death, we've got infectious disease taking up one point or 1,680 million so you can peek at some of these smallpox, some of them respiratory, malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS. Again, this is covering all of 20th century. Here's a view at some outbreaks, pandemics throughout history. Again, we're in a current one with COVID-19, Spanish flu about 100 years ago. Again, astounding numbers, 50 to 100 million dead, smallpox throughout time. You got Black Death, 75 million, upwards of 50% perhaps of Europe at the time. You can see malaria and tuberculosis over here. If we quick jump back to this pathogens uh, slide, you can see the number one virus killer, currently HIV, number one bacterial killer, tuberculosis, number one parasite, malaria. Uh, perhaps it's influenza in first place if you looked at the entirety of human history for overall number of deaths. Quick focus on COVID-19, important to look at your news source. Where are you getting this information? And are we being intelligent and scientifically literate as we're taking it in? Again, mentioned Corona for Crown. Here's two sources you could check out. I'd actually recommend a little bit more. This one, 191. This is a conversation with Amesh Adaija from Johns Hopkins. So both episodes from the Sam Harris podcast, really important, covers a lot of ground, give you good background information. All right, let's view some infographics. These are from Information is Beautiful. Again, it's important to realize that you got to look at where the data is from. So you can download and view the data from Information is Beautiful or Johns Hopkins or any major source that you can look at. These are from a few days ago. So these are like three or four days old. You look at those age 60 or older, those with existing conditions. These get a little bit more interesting. So how contagious and deadly is it? So my most recent number, and this is from a few minutes ago, is that perhaps the height is at 
0.6%, so around six times that of your normal influenza. That data coming from South Korea, hard to know. Again, early on, and there's a lot of bias because not everyone who has not been, you know, uh, or those who have been infected but haven't actually been tested, it's hard to know that number. Again, fatality rates by country, you can see that here. Uh, also interesting, media and disease deaths per day. Now, some of the ones that are going to be on our list today would include the top tuberculosis, HIV, malaria, uh, flu, cholera. What else are we touching? Obviously, COVID-19 and SARS and MERS. So let's start with COVID-19. This is data that we're getting from Information is Beautiful, the microbe scope. You can see on one side over here, for a percent who die, that's the very highest estimate. And actually, this is from a day or two ago. Their very lowest estimate was at 0.7. Again, I have reason to believe that perhaps it's lower than that, maybe at 0.6. Either way, very important needs to be taken seriously. Again, similarity to SARS that we saw earlier. Here we can look at the phylogeny of COVID-19. So we'll see an animation here. Again, a branching phylogeny or evolution relationships that show the mutations taking place within COVID-19. So let's have a look back over here. This is from nextstrain.org. So we look at our branching, we can see it Classically, a rectangular, radially, or even unrooted. Now, if you look at the onset of this, right, the earliest development in Wuhan, China, you can see as it starts to spread, you see the first cases in the United States. You can see as this is spreading, you can watch it up here. Probably easier to watch it within the rectangular. So it's getting more and more diverse as it spreads. You can see a big old bubble there in Seattle and West Coast. The colors are representing different varieties within COVID-19. All right, so very cool in terms of evolution. It brings up the topic of vectors. So how is this transmitted? Obviously humans are the vectors for COVID-19. Thought to have begun, obviously virus perhaps to bats, transmitted to pangolins, and then to humans. So those would be the vector pathway. More classically, with bubonic plague, rats, fleas, humans. Y'all, it's really important to keep in mind our hygiene. And social distancing. Here's a interesting diagram in terms of handshakes, pound, fist bump, chest bump. Um, try and keep your distance. Keep your hands cleaned. I mentioned earlier the idea of zoonotic viruses. So zoo meaning animal. So animal viruses are able to make the jump from their original host over to human beings. Really cool interview with David Quammen on Fresh Air. Also wrote an excellent book, Spillover. You can also watch his TED Talk. You can see influenza. Here it is, the major players that are crossing the barrier between animal and human as to uh, animal viruses. You see pigs or swine flu. You can see some of the designations there, H and N for hematoglutinin and neuraminidase describes the protein coat on the outside, not so much with coronaviruses, but similarly to influenza viruses, they're designated that way. So either from birds, in this case, sometimes bats, these can be transmitted. Let's look at influenza outbreaks recently. Here's another really cool TED talk from Nathan Wolf. So searching for viruses, uh, PBS, 
ran a really interesting series or um, image. Let's get back to the or microbe scope. You might want to have a map handy so that you can look at that and see where this stuff is happening. So if you look on the very bottom, you can run through a series of stories. So they have media coverage. We'll look at contagiousness first. You can hit these next things. So you got an R naught value. And you can see your regular picture here. What is spreadable and how spreadable is it? Cold comes in at around a two. I mean, you would spread it to two other people. Small smallpox much higher. Has it polio, diphtheria, cold? Obviously, smallpox has been wiped out. Diphtheria and polio massively diminished. Polio, one of the major um, efforts for Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that we've talked about. Uh, just 21 cases in 2017. Let's look at deadliness. So measured by fatality rate. The average number of people who are going to die from contracting the disease. Again, difficult to tell for COVID-19 right now. You got like upper and lower limits. We'll wait and see how that turns out. Again, here's a graph that shows how contagious it is and a correlation between contagiousness and deadliness. So again, most are going to be not too deadly. Again, infants and adults or uh, older folks, elderly, are going to be most often um, highest risk. Here you got flu, mumps, norovirus. So things that cause vomiting, sometimes diarrhea. Mentioned that one of the topics was with poverty. So you can see often these things that aren't that big of a deal in the developed world are very serious and significant in the developing world. So you can see preventable child deaths from norovirus, in India, Nigeria, Pakistan, Democratic Republic of Congo, all the way down. Uh, percent of child deaths, United States very low, UK near zero. See high chance of death zone. Some of these are unusually um, popular media coverage. So here are some really nasty diseases over time. One little known, leishmaniasis, destructive, depleting, caused by um, bacteria. We can actually click on that to see. If we look at this, um, oh, change that. So this is a parasite, um, not a bacterium. You can see percent who died, 95%, not very contagious. Um, sand flies transmit it, so we can see the impact of sand flies coming up soon. You can see HIV, so percent who die, fairly significant, right? 80% is very high, fairly high contagiousness caused by virus. We'll look at the difference between pneumonic plague and bubonic plague, both caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis. Again, most of these things can be treated. And you can see here, untreated versus treated, the fatality rate goes way down. All right, and lastly, mosquitoes. So we're talking about vectors. You can see these are the organisms affected by or transmitted by mosquitoes. They account for at least 12% of new infectious diseases. So even within those bites, you can see the mosquitoes playing a massive role. 12% uh, or 32 or 322 million. This one is a shocker, right? If you looked at most deadly animals, it is not even close. Mosquitoes, 764,000 deaths per year. Sharks, eh, about five. You can see a lot of these are vectors for infectious disease pathogens. Bulk of those mosquito deaths are from malaria, but dengue and Zika would also be connected to it. So again, jump on this website, right? Hit pause, jump on it, explore. You can click on all sorts of different things, get tons of information. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, information is beautiful.net. Best website. I love it. Thank you. All right, jumping back here. So we had our maps. 
Oh, we should look back on number of sufferers because this is actually important here. So if I look over here and see, oftentimes you have number of sufferers. So let me click out of this, which is important. There's often diseases that are underrepresented in the media and awareness and yet impact the lives of thousands and millions of people. And here's where the folks at givewell.org list their top charities. So the ones I'm going to give to each year, typically against malaria or malaria consortium, but things like deworming and vitamin supply can be really impactful in places like sub-Saharan Africa. So there's that image we had from the mosquitoes. Uh, one thing I did want to want to mention in terms of mosquitoes, hey, well, let's just get rid of them. So Radiolab Kill Em All discusses both sides of that. My idol E.O. Wilson, who we've mentioned before in class, says, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So two major uh, genera of mosquitoes, the Aedes, so Aedes aegypti, which is responsible for <clears throat> Zika and Dengue, and then Anopheles, which carries malaria have co-evolved with humans. They pretty much are not involved in the ecosystem other than as transmitters of disease to humans. They've co-evolved with us. So he believes, shockingly, surprisingly, that let's just get rid of them. So there are gene drivers that people are experimenting with to extinct those mosquitoes. So easy to be on that side. Although we might want to also look at mosquitoes as protectors of the environment. In places where mosquitoes exist and where malaria and these infectious diseases are high, it's much less likely for humans to come and take over and destroy that ecosystem. So something to think about. All right, so we're going to wrap up this portion of the video and we'll do the rest of this in a second video. So make sure you put your comments down below and follow through our flipped classroom lesson ideas and we'll see you in part two.